Capital 2244. Daily News, give me the managing editor, quick. Party speaking. Enright's been found guilty. I just got the signal. Let him roll. Enright's guilty. That's swell, Randy. We're all set. Now hop back here as soon as you can. Get me Dwyer, circulation department. Ken Dwyer signing off, and uh, you know the rest of it. Okay, gorgeous grand. Dwyer! Look, sweetheart, Randy just got us a break on the Enright trial, and we're rolling with the extra. Now snap into it for a change. Say, who's been fighting a one-man battle with the Post since they started this circulation war? Let her roll! by 20 minutes. That means an extra 50,000 copies for us. Nice spread of Randy's art there, eh? Not bad. Still thinks he's a better secretary than cartoonist, though. Oh, you kind of miss her, eh? What, with a valentine I have now? 50,000, huh? One more scoop and our circulation gain will steal the rest of the Post advertisers. Get a daily news here. Enright found guilty. Say, Randy, you folks sure pulled a fast one. I've sold out twice already, and the post is just coming out on the street now. All right, get your post here in Enright Street. All right, get your post down. Enright Street. Get the real load out of the news. Enright Gilly. Enright Street. Enright Gilly. Enright Street. Enright Gilly. Enright Street. Enright Gilly. The post says Enright Street. The news says he's Gilly. Free. Gilly. Give me that paper. All right, get your post here in Enright Street. Come on, come on, give me circulation. Jim, the pool. I know, I know. Dwyer, somebody sold us out. Enright went free. Now, every paper's got to be picked up off the street. Wrong number, sir. You want the street cleaning department. Now, listen, fire! Fire! What I like to see Johnson's face. Now, will you jerk that addition? Holy cow, you fathead! Get the distribution stations and tell them to hold every copy. I build circulation so you can pull bonus like this. Why don't you keep your mind in the news instead of the cartoonists? You can lay off, Randy. Since you've been working for me, I don't notice her father around you much. Miss Davis! You see these, Cleopatra? Their names. Call every root man on the list and have them hold every copy. <laughs> you think you could run a newspaper? Why, well, you got the brains of a left-handed job printer with a hangover. We finally get our circulation almost up to the post, and what do you do? Mr. Taggart, I... Shut up. What am I to tell our advertisers? What'll I say to them? Answer me. But, Mr. Taggart... Don't I... interrupt. What'll our subscribers say? But, Mr. Taggart, it wasn't our fault. We were suckered. Suckered, eh? Now, listen, Hardy. Contract or no contract, another boner like this, and you go on the lobster ship. My newspaper is no place for a managing editor who manages to be dumb. If it weren't for dryer circulation boosters, we'd all be in the streets. Everything will be all right, boss. I managed to get back most of the boneheaded edition. 
I had it fixed, Mr. Taggart. And how? I slipped the juror a hundred bucks to raise a window if Enright was guilty. And the Post would never think of slipping the lug 200, now would they? Yeah, one if I land and two if I see. And you pick a female cartoonist to be a Paul Revere. Why not? I've been doing all the drawing in court. You're lucky to be still drawing your pay. Well, don't worry, boss. We'll more than make it up on tonight's contest. Your contests have done a lot for the paper, Dwyer. I'll be listening in to the broadcast tonight. And remember, Miss Burns, you're covering art, not the opening and closing of windows. You see, Goldilocks, it's contests that make bigger and better newspapers. The Post would never think of slipping the lug 200 bucks now, would they? Well, never mind, boss. My contest will put you on your four feet again. That's gratitude. When I'm trying to square the beef so he won't fire you, I know you two just got a bum break. Well, if you ever get a break, I hope it's a leg. You couldn't feel that way, now could you, my pet? Of course not. I hope it's your neck. Why didn't you tell me? Here I've been tearing daisies to see if you still love me. Hey, she's working for me now, Dwyer. She's an artist. She's washed up with you circulation mugs. Hardy speaking. Who? Oh, Johnson of the Post, huh? All right, put him on. I just wanted to thank you for the boner, Toots. Enright, guilty. <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. The boss has been on my neck ever since that Shanty Dwyer cut into our circulation. That Shanty Dwyer? Some of you are public. I just wanted to tell you we're dedicating the next edition to the news. Read the post, always first with the latest and right news. <laughs> now there's a real newspaper man, Johnson. On his toes, smart, alert, even manages to print the right story. And what's your broadcast tonight? Another cake baking contest? Uh-uh. Wrong, my fine feathered friend. The Daily News Happy Homes Contest. The first time a circulation building contest was ever broadcast. Dwyer, always first with the latest. You'll pardon me, won't you? Something in here makes me long for some fresh air. Uh-uh. Not so fast, my pretty. Oh, touch me and I'll scream. Mm, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go home and dress for the broadcast. Dressing for the finals of my Happy Homes contest? Lady, I'm flattered. The point is, nothing's ever so bad if you're dressed for it. Sit down. Listen, my pet, I want to talk to you like a father. Really? And how long have you been a father? Can't you be serious? Can you? You want to watch that Hardy guy, little one? He's got designs on you. And? Well, the first thing you know, you'll end up in some little rose-covered cottage. And then where'd you be? You've never heard me objecting to a rose-covered cottage, have you, Ken? Now that I think of it, I haven't. I've missed you, Randy, since you went to work with Hardy. Have you, Ken? You bet, Ken. Things aren't the same without you. I find myself thinking about you too often. Why don't you come back to me and work in the circulation department? I get it. You'll want your secretary back. Well, sure I do. Why not? Besides, Randy, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. Save it for a contest, Othario. You'll need all the gags you can get. Hey, wait a minute. Have I got smallpox or something? No, I think it's your circulation. Well, it's never been bad enough to give me cold feet. How about dinner tonight? Sorry, Ken. I'm having dinner with Jim. You're calling for me at 7, aren't you? Why, well, yes, of course, Randy. Foiled again. I'll drive you out there. No, thanks. I'll go willingly. Don't step out of your class, kid. It's bad for you. Save your voice for the broadcast, sweetheart. You can read, can't you? Say, you. Something I can do for you? Who's the guy what runs the contest? Why, uh... Something wrong? Yeah. My wife bakes the best angel food cake in town. And she don't win a prize in these phony contests you run here. Every night I go home, she's falling. Now, I want to find the cook what judges the contest. I don't blame you. You see that door? A guy named Hardy. Hardy. Is your name Hardy? Yes. That's all I want to know.
Good evening. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm sorry you, uh, can't be here tonight to, uh, to see this. Boy, I wish they could. It's a honey. Funny man. But we're going to try and tell you about it. So I take great pleasure in presenting Mr. Ken Dwyer. Thank you, thank you. Folks, you've never seen anything like this in your life. The enthusiasm, the tense and expectant crowd. You are about to hear the finals of the Daily News Happy Home Contest, which you have all followed with such interest. But remember, you readers of the Daily News, the winner of tonight's contest depends on your votes. And you should see the smiling faces of these couples, folks. It's going to be hard to determine which is the happiest. These are the finals of the Daily News Happy Homes Contest. Beginning at this end, chosen by many of the readers, were Mr. and Mrs. George Popupopoulos. <laughs> the firemen and policemen's votes were almost 100% for Mr. and Mrs. Patrick McManus. And now, Mr. and Mrs. Sylvester Smith, the lovebirds of the South Shore. And the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Harold Bowen. Mr. and Mrs. Washington Jones were chosen by many romance lovers. Where did he get the foreign legion? Every nationality has a winner. Now, our little lovebirds of the South Shore, Mr. and Miss... I have a message for all you ladies out there, that it is our duty to bring out the best in our husbands. We train our children, we train our dogs. Why should we neglect our husbands? Uh, now Sylvester here had enough of bad habits for three husbands. That man over there wants you to keep your voice down, dear. You're taking that. Oh, you hit me, you beast! I'm sure we all appreciate your fine sentiments. No man can hit a woman in my presence. What? You, you push my husband with hey, your hands. You're taking that. <laughs> I couldn't do it justice. It's amazing, simply amazing. You never saw anything like it. The crowd's gone wild. It's a riot. A riot of enthusiasm. Folks, only the daily news will give you the human interest touches, the thing you love. Listen to the crowd. Just listen to them. You hear that, folks? A police has caught him. Can't you do something like that? That's right. It sells papers, doesn't it? That's why we are losing ground with every issue. One more big campaign like this is the Daily News, and I'm going to lose a newspaper. And you're going to lose a job. Oh, Ken, are you hurt? Oh, Jim, quick, get a doctor. Better stick a pen in him first, make sure he's unconscious. How can you talk like that? Poor Ken. And his contest was going over so well. That's all I wanted to know, Cherub. I might have known it was a phony. Everything about him is. Well, that one wasn't. Lady, you sure got the drop on me. Little man, you've had a busy day. Randy and I are going over to the Seville Club for a little excitement. Sorry you can't join us, but you need your rest. The, the lug. Why the Seville Club? I just got a tip. Nick Enright is throwing an acquittal party. <laughs> What would you call that? He 
Enright boys at play. Giving me a few lessons, honey. Relax. I guess we all know why we're gathered around here, fellas. To pay our respects to Mickey. Uh. It ain't every day a guy gets sprung for a rap like this. So first of all, we've arranged a little flowery tribute to a real guy. Great save, didn't you? Could use that no matter how the trial went. That's Manelli standing. He's got the fresh fruit and vegetable racket. Is there any payoff Enright hasn't got his finger in? One, sir? No, thanks. A friend is saving a seat for me. Couple of nickels, Cinderella. Thanks. House debt, two five two five five. Hello? Civil Club? You call Jim Hardy to the phone. This is his office calling. So we figures any guy was smart enough to beat a rap like that deserves something for it. So we all chipped in to buy Nikki a little, uh... token of our esteem and respect. And, uh, well, uh, uh well, respect. <laughs> Your office is on the phone, Mr. Hart. Thanks. Right back, Randy. I'm Mr. Hardy. Hello? Hardy? Yes? Taggart, get right down here. I just heard the governor's resigning. On my way, sir. I'll be down in 15 minutes. Randy, I'll be back as soon as I can. You stay here and see what you can see. At that, I'll be able to see more than you could. Thank you so much. What did you do, block it? You couldn't have possibly had anything to do with Jim's being called away now, could you? Why, you don't think that I would. You glad to see me? I can't see why I should be. I'm glad to see you, too. Well, everything all right? You don't care who comes to your club, do you? Why? That's the circulation man on the Daily News. The girl's the one that's been riding me with cartoons all through the trial. Oh, I'll fix it up, Nick. Never I'll... mind. I'll talk to them myself. You say that's all again. Randy Burns of the news, aren't you? I guess you know who I am. Relax, Dwyer. The young lady and I know each other from court. Sit down. I just wanted to tell you that now the trial is over, you can lay off the Enright cartoons. What a pity. And with a profile like that, too. You've done enough to it. And you can tell your editor that I don't want any more stories connecting me with the rackets. 
I don't like it, see? You don't like it. Listen, big shot. The news will print what we like, and Miss Burns will draw what she likes. Now, if you've got that straight, you can go back to your bone and muscle convention. Save it, Maxie. He's just showing off for a dame. Can't blame him, can you? Can! Just a hero, Maxie. Oh, Ken, you shouldn't take chances like that because of me. Oh, it's just the boy scout in me, sweet. But suppose he had shot you. Would you have minded? Of course I would. But you shouldn't take chances like that. I do a lot of things because of you, Randy. I told you this afternoon I had something to tell you. This afternoon you wanted me to be your secretary. Well, will you? Well, I want. Be my secretary. So we're back to that, all. Look, Casanova, I won't come back to the circulation department, and I won't be your secretary, and I wouldn't be anything, anything else you could think of. See, what is this? Every time I open my mouth, you cloud up and rain all over me. Can I be wrong? What was it you wanted to say to me? Well, it's just that you and I have knocked around a lot together, Brandy. Yes? And we've hit it off pretty well, too, haven't we? Oh, of course we have, most of the time. Well, then why don't we team up? You belong to me and the circulation department. And Dwyer, if you ask me again, I'll... Say, that's not a bad sketch of Enright. You know, he was Jim Hardy's best pal. He kept circulation bouncing all during the trial. Is he really such good copy? Is he? He's got his finger in every racket in town. Any guy as well known as Little Nicky sells plenty of newspapers. And who says crime doesn't pay? Look at this. And this. And that. You know how papers are made, Maxie? Come on, I'll show you. Just a flurry of Oh, an optimist. I'm glad you think so. The first time in history the Daily News has the biggest circulation in the Post. But, uh, no more of your alibis. Unless you show some results in the next 48 hours, you'll be through, do you understand? You'll be fired. Send him in. I guess you know who I am. Naturally. Seen enough pictures of me, haven't you? Have I? And yeah, I get around. And I know about the war you two rags have. You know, I used to distribute a lot of things in this town, among them beer. The Daily News is riding me with every issue. And you're not selling any papers, right? Well, these boys of mine are pretty good salesmen. They're not troubled much with competition. You need distribution, and I need to keep my men working. How about it? No, thanks. I'll handle my own grief. But you're not doing so well. I heard, Evans. Come on, now, be smart. Cut me in on 10% of your gain, and I'll give you results. Why, if that ever got out... Don't be a sucker. All I want's a crack at the Daily News. If I were only sure, there wouldn't be any rough stuff. It's a deal. Your circulation trouble's over, Johnson. And you can forget about the daily news. They're my business now. Where's your daily news? Sorry, mister, I ain't handling it anymore. A couple of guys came around, told me to lay off or else, and I've got a wife and a kid to think of. Yeah, ain't right in you,
climb out of there, buddy. Over there. build up the biggest circulation we ever had, and what happens? We lose 50,000 issues in 48 hours. You see those? Advertisers we've lost by falling down below our guaranteed net. Now, what are you going to do about it? Don't ask me riddles. We've enough of them now. Why is the circulation falling off like this? You're the circulation man. You tell me. Well, somebody better find out and let me in on it. Well, wise guy, what are you going to do? Pull another contest out of the hat? Don't look at me with those strong white teeth. Maybe it's the news you print they don't like. What do you mean, the news? They've been eating Randy's cartoons with molasses. Pretty tough for her to lose distribution just when she's got a chance to become famous. A great time for you to pick a job that's too tough for you. Listen, Daisy, no job is too tough for a bright guy. And if it's Randy you're thinking of, why don't you get wise to the spot you put her on? What if the grand jury should want to know where she gets her information about Enright? What are you going to tell them, a crystal ball? I'll worry about that. You look up circulation in the dictionary and find out what that means. Okay, Romeo. I'll show you some circulation that will put Randy over. Get me the Bart of Alderman. Yes, Mr. Dwyer, I'll get the secretary. I'm I'm the right. Bart of Alderman? This is Samuel J. McCarthy of the 55th Street Citizens League. Why aren't you doing something about these records that are being exposed by the Daily News? We voters are entitled to know. But do you know what I think? I think you crooks are in with them. Give me the mayor, and not the old gray one. Just a minute. Yes, yes Mr. Dwyer. Daily News. Party. Hello. Hello, this is an indignant taxpayer. Why aren't you political parasites doing something about these records I've been reading about? What do you mean you don't know? Why don't you ask the girl that's writing the articles? Give me the grand jury. Miss Burns, you have persistently refused to divulge to the grand jury your source or sources of information. You have been charged with contempt of court. Have you anything to say before sentence is passed? Nothing. I claim a reporter's privilege. I do sentence you then to three days in the county jail. If you decide to talk, the sentence will be suspended. That's all. I told you so, but didn't I tell you? Gone off half cock like that on those stalls. And the poor kid in the jug. Boy, I don't know how you're ever going to square yourself. Everybody knows Enright's in all these rackets, and they throw Randy in the cooler because we can't prove it. You mean everybody but the grand jury knows it. Well, I hope Randy can forgive you, that's all. Well, she would if she knew how I felt. I'd give a couple of right eyes if I knew what started all this. Dirty double crosser. Aren't you the guy that wanted to see Randy famous? Gee, I wish I was an artist. But I guess my talent is always too scattered about. Come on, come on. Here. Well, if it ain't Billy Blake. 
face. I ain't seen you since that night. I'll die you before my life, Gertie. Besides, I'm a lady. Out like a life. And did you get that freeze? And her and me used to live in the same house. Did you? Tell me about it, will you? I'd love to. Well, her name was Aggie then, and she comes from a place over on the south side. The night I meet her, she's broke. And what do you think happened? So when I don't get sore, see, and the first thing you know, she's all dressed up like one of them Christmas trees you see in department stores. Thanks, Gertie. You've given me a swell story. Say, would you like to know how I got my star? You bet I would. Only later on when I can do justice to the story. You're gonna get your picture in the paper, Billy. With my mouth open? Oh, no, I'm not. Oh. You give me that picture. Not this one, girlfriend. I work too hard on it. You give me that picture, I'll lay your face open. Nikki! Nikki, she's drawing a picture and she's gonna print it with my mouth open. I've told you often enough about keeping it shut, haven't I? Hand it over, beautiful. Oh, no. I'm not working for you. I wouldn't mind if you were. I thought it was a picture you were after. Well, old home week. Putting you in the women's ward now, huh? You're sure slipping, big shot. I'll say he is. Girlfriend's in here for drunk driving, and I've got a picture of her. Wow, it's a honey. In right slipping, heart throb jug for drunken disorderly. We'll 24 seat it. Come on, sweetheart, you're back in circulation. If you're smart, you'll turn up that picture, Dwyer. I'll let you be the smart one for a change. 500 bucks for it. Don't be extravagant. You can buy it in an hour for three cents. So you won't talk, huh? You bet I won't. Did I hear something? And if I wasn't in such a hurry to get to the office, I wouldn't be found dead in the same cab with you. That's gratitude. After all I've done for you. And how? For making you famous. For saving the news by making your name a household word. For bringing you pretties. For you taking... think of everything, don't you? Hey, don't do that. This candy's good. I want it on a swell punch board. those trucks again, Nick. They'll be laying for us this time. So what? Get the newsstands and the kids that sell the papers. The ones you used to cut rope papers with. Johnson didn't say nothing about using them. We don't take our orders from Johnson. Hand them over.
Okay. Here's Evans' check for your services, Enright. In full. In full? Well, Mr. Evans and I feel that you went overboard in stopping that edition of the news. Naturally, we, we can't approve such tactics. Well, I... I guess that's all. Oh. Well, I don't think so. Well, maybe the boys did get a little rough, Johnson, because they haven't had much exercise lately. But I'll see that it doesn't happen again. But, uh... We don't... We don't need you anymore. Well, that's where you're wrong. You're gonna need me for a long while yet, Johnson. I got results, didn't I? And I can use a newspaper front. Oh. Payment in full, eh? You could tell Evans to send my regular check to the Seville Club. I'll be there from six on. The judge is calling, but uh, not for publication. It didn't do you any good to kill that edition. They'll just run the same story in the next one. Maybe. guarantee our advertisers six editions daily, and we don't even get out one. What about the next edition? I'm ready to roll. Tell all the men that to go armed until further orders. I'll get out the next edition if I have to use the militia. Arming the men would only make more trouble. I won't have it. Our men's lives are at stake, and until I'm fired, I'm in charge of my department. Well, the plates on Billy Blake have been destroyed. But they couldn't. They, they wouldn't dare. I saw him leaving. He's the same guy that bossed that job down the loading platform. Maxie. Maxie? Maxie. So it's been Enright's wrecking crew. What lugs we are. Get me Johnson on the post. Get this. Cut me in on Dwyer's line. Johnson? Dwyer, just how long do you think you'd get away with it? We've given you enough rope to hang yourself, and now we're gonna blast you wide open. It wasn't our fault, Dwyer. I know it. I know it. We didn't want any rough stuff, and now we can't get him out. That's tough. Now Enright is giving you and Evans a ride, right out of the newspaper business. Read it in the Daily News, Heel. <laughs> you get the orchid, sweetheart. I'm gonna tell Randy you're almost smart enough to be a reporter. Here's where the Post gets a one-way ticket to the penitentiary. Well, that ought to take care of everything. Randy Burns, now I'm gonna take care of something. Randy, this is your love life. What? No, 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 now wait a minute, wait a minute. The local boy just made good. Listen, my pet, if you let me out of the doghouse, I'll buy you a champagne dinner, hot dogs and everything. What do you mean, no? We're celebrating. Oh, Johnson. Now, what could I have to say to you? You've got to listen, Dwyer. If you'll kill that scoop on the post, I'll give the Daily News an even bigger one. You can send in right up on it. And with him out of the way, we'll stay on the level. You're on the level now, the lower one. Spring the story, and I'll see if it's worth it. If you want to know how Enright was acquitted, go down to the Seville Club at 6 o'clock. Don't you see what you could do with it? You'd break the town wide open with it. It's a deal. But if you're lying, the news will 24 seats you across the country tomorrow. Press room, quick. Kill the post Enright edition. I'll be responsible. Give me Hardy. Never mind, take him yourself. Story? A scoop. The biggest spread of the year laying an egg at the Seville Club. And I'm the lad who's going to get it. He'll tell Randy that I'm almost smart enough to be a reporter, will he? Well, wait till he and Taggart get a load of this. So, gangsters are being welcomed into the Fourth Estate. Johnson will never hold another job as long as he lives. Composing room. The post Enright head's on its way down. Dwyer said to kill it. What? Say, who's running this paper? A story breaks in the second edition. Let her roll. Hello, Randy. You haven't seen Ken, have you? He was going to feed me. I know, but he had to go out. Oh, he did, not You going up town, will you take me? Over. Hey, 
All right, here's another one we can knock off. I'm running for a lot of trouble. People are still talking about the trial. And once they start suspecting a judge... Well, judge that, Jennings. Stop crying. Thanks, Nick. A lot of money. But if I get into any trouble... Don't be a sucker. You've been paid. Where's the mastermind? He went out to get a big story. He went out to get a story? Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah? Did you say where he was going? Sure, the Seville Club. And as a matter of fact, he was telling Charlie where... I told you that heater stuff was out of date, didn't I? Say, Nick, oh, how about that? Uh, you know my friends, don't you? Maxie and I are giving a little party for the press. Sure, you know how it is, Tony. We uh, newspaper men have to stick together. Your wisecracking time is getting kind of short. Where's your hospitality, Maxie? Take the folks to my apartment and make them comfortable. You heard them. Come on, get up. Not kidding yourself that you can take us for a ride, are you, Enright? Don't be old-fashioned. Smart guy like you. Come on, get out. Take it easy, Nick. You don't want any more trouble, do you? I'm still minding my business. In there. Come on. Here we are. So what? Take your coat and tie off. Nick wants you to be comfortable. Sit down. I guess. Rendezvous double suicide. Did I ever say anything about not wanting to be found dead with you? Johnson? Just to show you that I'm a newspaper man, I've got a story for you. Dwyer and his girlfriend were just found dead in a cozy little rendezvous in the Club Seville. The waiter tells me they've been there quite often. Murder? Don't be dumb, Johnson. He shot the girl and then committed suicide. It's sure to be a scoop because uh, they're just rehearsing it. You can't do it! Hello? Hello? Now that's more like. 
like it. Drink up. What's that for? To give us courage to do without the blindfold? No, that's for the coroner. Uh, champagne dinner. I'm sorry about the jail, Randy. Forget it. Got it. This is only supposed to look like a love scene. Good luck, honey. You never called me that before. There are a lot of things I haven't said. Quit stalling. Calling car 62. Calling car 62. Johnson, managing editor of Post, reports emergency case at Seville Club. Proceed at once. Hey, guy, Fry, Maxie. Watch him shave the spot on the back of his head. See the slit in the right trouser leg. I don't go for bedtime stories, smart guy. Get going on that bubble water. Come on, the boss will be getting anxious. So Nicky has to be in on the fun farewells, huh? Has to say goodbye to the lady, don't he? Come on, drink up. And the big shot wanted us to be comfortable. Save the comedy. Pretty good reason to think he came here. Now I know he did. You say Dwyer's here? Where is he? I haven't seen him. Well, have a look around anyway. I don't like newsmen hanging around while I'm here. <coughs> Let it go. That's in right, all right. And we got Judge Jennings, too. Who tipped you, Johnson? All right, boys, let's clean up. Well, it's all over. You all right, honey? Do you think I can't take it? She's fainted. You're telling me? Come on, over here. Get her some water. You get it. She might come to and need me. Need you? <laughs> That's a laugh. Well, don't split anything, Goldilocks. What would she want with a moth eaten managing editor? Well, she wasn't sent us in your circulation department now, was she? Well, you can't blame an artist for not wanting to be a secretary, can you? Well, then lay off trying to get her back. She's made her choice. She's free. Well, she won't be for long. I'm going to marry her. Yeah. Well, sweetheart, you finally got yourself a scoop. Yeah, well, maybe it'll help you sell some papers for a change. See? You better get back to the office. I just heard the governor's resigning. Then cartoonist, though. Oh, you kind of miss her, eh? 
What, with a valentine I have now? 50,000, huh? One more scoop and our circulation gain will seal the rest of the Post advertisers. Get a daily news here. Enright's found guilty. Say, Randy, you folks sure pulled a fast one. I've sold out twice already, and the Post is just coming out on the street now. All right, get your Post here in Enright's street. All right, get your Post down. Enright's free. Get the real load out of the news. Enright's guilty. Enright's free. Enright's guilty. Enright's free. Enright's guilty. Enright's free. Enright's guilty. The Post says Enright's free. The news says he's guilty. Free. Guilty. Give me that paper. All right, get your Post here in Enright's free. Come on, come on, give me circulation. Jim, the pool. I know, I know. Squire, somebody sold us out. And right one free. Now, every paper's got to be picked up off the streets. Wrong number, sir. You want the street cleaning department. Now, listen, fire! Fire! What I like to see Johnson's face. Now, will you jerk that addition? Holy cow, you fathead! Get the distribution stations and tell them to hold every copy. I build circulation so you can pull bonus like this. Why don't you keep your mind on the news instead of the cartoonists? You can lay off, Randy. Since you've been working for me, I don't notice her father and around. Two, two, four, four. Daily News, give me the managing editor, quick. Hardy speaking. Enright's been found guilty. I just got the signal. Let him roll. Enright's guilty. That's swell, Randy. We're all set. Now hop back here as soon as you can. Get me Dwyer, circulation department. Ken Dwyer signing off, and uh, you know the rest of it. Okay, gorgeous grand. Quiet. Look, sweetheart, Randy just got us a break on the Enright trial, and we're rolling with the extra. Now snap into it for a change. Say, who's been fighting a one-man battle with the Post since they started this circulation war? Let her roll. Extra 50,000 copies for us. Nice spread of Randy's art there, eh? Not bad. Still thinks he's a better secretary. What will our subscribers say? But, Mr. Taggart, it wasn't our fault. We were suckered. Suckered, eh? Now listen, Hardy. Contract or no contract, another boner like this, and you go on the lobster ship. My newspaper is no place for a managing editor who manages to be dumb. If it weren't for dryer circulation boosters, 
<laughs> We'd all be in the streets. Everything will be all right, boss. I managed to get back most of the bonehead edition. I had it fixed, Mr. Taggart. And how? I slipped the juror a hundred bucks to raise a window if Enright was guilty. And the post would never think of slipping the lug 200, now would they? Yeah, one if I land and two if I see. And you pick a female cartoonist to be a Paul Revere. Why not? I've been doing all the drawing in court. You're lucky to be still drawing your pay. Well, don't worry, boss. We'll more than make it up on tonight's contest. Your contests have done a lot for the paper, Dwyer. I'll be listening in to the broadcast tonight. And remember, Miss Burns, you're covering art, not the opening and closing of windows. You see, Goldilocks, it's contests that make bigger and better newspapers. The Post would never think of slipping the lug 200 bucks now, would they? Well, never mind, boss. My contest will put you on your four feet again. That's gratitude. When I'm trying to square the beef so he won't fire you, I know you two just got a bum break. Well, if you ever get a break, I hope it's a leg. You couldn't feel that way, now could you, my pet? Of course not. I hope it's your neck. Why didn't you tell me? Here I've been tearing daisies to see... Now you, Martin, it's Davis. Davis! You see these Cleopatra? Their names. Call every root man on the list and have them hold every copy. Grab the last edition off the street, boys. It's a bonehead. Coming right up. What's the matter? Do it in 20 minutes. What happened? That dumb editor of ours was asleep at the switch. you think you could run a newspaper? Why, you got the brains of a left-handed job printer with a hangover. We finally get our circulation almost up to the post, and what do you do? Mr. Taggart, I... Shut up! What am I to tell our advertisers? What'll I say to them? Answer me! But, Mr. Taggart... Don't interrupt! 